Okay, so let's go over how to draw a covalently bonded molecule. So, um, let's say, for instance, you're given an example like CH4. When you're looking at the molecule here, you have to make sure that you know what the outside electrons are like in each of your, each of your individual atoms. You can see here that I've got two capital letters there, so there are two different atoms that I've got. Inside this molecule, I have one carbon, and I have four hydrogens. So what I need to do here is look at each of these atoms individually by using the periodic table, working out what their valency is by the number of electrons they have on the outside, and seeing how they'll stick together. Now, hydrogen is really easy. It's the first element of the periodic table, so it only has one electron. So when I draw it, it looks like this. We have one single uh, circle going around like this. It's my H, uh, and the X represents the one electron that's in there. For carbon, carbon looks like this. We've got our C atom. There are two electrons in the first shell. And then we draw a second shell. It's a bit rubbish from me. Uh, and we put in the four other electrons because carbon is element number six on your periodic table. You should be able to see that. Okay. How many hydrogens do I have? I've got four hydrogens. There it says right here. So I need to put four of these on here so that in this circle around the outside, there are eight electrons in every shell. Okay, so how do we do that? First, draw the carbon. It's a good idea to draw your biggest, uh, your biggest element first because the other ones are going to be attached to that bigger element. Right, here we go. A bit better of a drawing for me there. One, two, three, four electrons on the outside shell. Where can I put the hydrogens though? Well, there's a space up here, so I can put one of my hydrogens in there, which I'm drawing in red. There's a space over here. space down here and a space down here. So this would be the dot and cross diagram for methane CH4. All right, what if it's a little bit more difficult then? How about if I have something like ammonia, NH3? Here I've got instead one nitrogen and three hydrogens. So here we have to be a little bit more clever. If we draw these out again, we've already done hydrogen, that's really easy. It's just got one electron in it like this. Nitrogen, however, has what's called a lone pair because on the uh, nitrogen is element number seven. So there are two electrons in the first shell, and there are one. Well, let me do that shell first, actually. There are one, two, three, four, five electrons in the second shell. If you look here, these two are already paired. So the only three places that my hydrogen can go are here, here, and here. So um, when I'm doing my molecule, you have to make sure that you're not overlapping that area. Right, uh, let me just go back to my pen. So I'm going to draw my nitrogen. Now I'm going to skip the inside electrons because in simplified dot and cross diagrams you can do that. 
you don't have to draw the inside electrons unless it tells you to draw all the electrons. So I'm going to just draw the ones on the outside because they're the only ones that I care about here. And then I'm going to put my hydrogens in again on red. We're going to put one on here, one on here, and one on here. Draw my circles on. Ooh. Voila. Now note that I have not put one here where the lone pair is because that's already paired and we don't need to put one on there. All right. What if it's a bit more complicated then? What if I have something like, uh, here's a tough one, phosphorus trichloride. That's PCl3. No hydrogens this time. So it's a little bit more challenging for us to do. And these are some quite complicated molecules. So we're probably not going to want to draw every single uh, electron that's in them. So we can kind of cheat a little bit. You just have to work out what, um, you just have to work out what group each of these elements is in. Now, if you go to your periodic table, you'll see the column that it's in, and above that column will be the group. So, you know, you kind of know what a periodic table looks like. It looks like this. You've got your transition elements here, and then you've kind of got columns here, three, that's the fifth one, six, seven. You've got these columns like this. And above them, there'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and zero. Well, if you look at your periodic table, phosphorus will be found somewhere like here, and chlorine will be found around here. So we've got two different kinds of uh, element here. Whatever this number is at the top, the group number, that's the number of electrons that it will have in its outside shell. I can prove that. Uh, this is what phosphorus looks like. Got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because it's element number 15, there are 15 electrons in it. And so if you work out what that shell looks like, it'll be like this, where you've got five electrons on the outside shell, just like I predicted on my thing. Chlorine. Chlorine is very similar. You've got one, two electrons in the first shell. This is element number 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight electrons there and then finally one two three four five six and finally seven there we go Ooh. good right so how are these going to join on well look it's a it's very similar to what we did with the hydrogen if you look at the chlorine, there's one space there. And look, we've got one, two, three spaces for the phosphorus. So we need to stick these together so that the one space on the chlorine matches with where the spaces are in the phosphorus. Let me just scroll down a little bit. So we're going do our phosphorus first. I'm only going to do the outside electrons. I'm not going to bother with the ones in the middle. Two, three. Okay, so there's my five electrons there. Now we need to do the chlorine. Now, a lot of people will do things like this. They'll, they'll, they'll put the chlorine in like that. And then they'll say, oh, that's done. A lot of people will do that. That is wrong, because if we go back up here, where we had to look at our actual thing, there's seven electrons in that shell. So we can't just treat it like it's hydrogen, which only did have one. This one has seven electrons in its shell. So we need to put those seven electrons in here. So we're going to go one, two, dip, 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 dip. 
that's perfect now. And we can carry on with this. Oh, just sent you there, just made a little mistake. Right, so we're going to go CL. And then finally, this guy, CL, boom, 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 boom. Okay, right, finally, uh, double bonds is what we need to do. So for a double bond, this one's a little bit tougher. Um, say you've got something like CO2. Um, this means, again, that we've got one carbon. And we've got two oxygens. Now, if we draw these out, carbon, remember it's element number six. So we've got one, oh, let me just draw this in. One, two, three, four. There we go. And our oxygen is here. We're going to go one, two, again. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. Now, what we need to do is be able to position these so that the carbon and the oxygen are joined together and that there are two carbons, sorry, there are two oxygens and only one carbon. But if I just do this as the way that I've done before, you'll see it doesn't kind of make sense. I'll show you what I mean if I give it a go using a method that a lot of students try um, and don't seem to see where they've gone wrong. If I do this and I put the carbon in like this, those really should be on the line, um, and then put my oxygen on here like this, I wonder if you can see why this would be wrong. So I see this a lot in student work. So can you see what's wrong with it? If you look, not every circle has eight electrons in it. Every circle must have eight electrons. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in that one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six in this one. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this one. So not, this isn't correct. We actually look, if you see, we've got a spare electron here and a spare electron there. So these two can join together. And we've got a spare electron here and a spare electron there. So those two can join together. And actually, so what the real answer for carbon dioxide is that we need a double bond. When you're drawing this, you should draw the two electrons in the same area. So we're going two dots over here, two dots over here. And for the oxygen, there are going to be two crosses in this area. And we're going to have cross, 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 cross. Let's draw the circle in. And then cross, 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 cross. Draw the circle in. Right, uh, let's just do, finish this off now. Oh, finish off now, voila we have carbon dioxide, CO2. Now, when you're drawing this like this, if you want to draw it in a, a bond notation, then you just kind of draw it like that, showing the two lines for the double bond. Um, uh, and that's really it. I hope that helps.